Hello, everybody. My name is Brian Carter. You know, after talking with multiple uh, producers and mixers and musicians about McDSP's APB16 system, it's clear that there's a little bit of confusion about it. So that's what this presentation is for today. It's really to dispel some of the myths, um, give you an opportunity to see it in action, and, uh, and just provide as much information as we can about it. But one of the biggest myths is that a lot of people think it's a DSP-based system, like many of the other products out there. But that's absolutely incorrect. This is an analog-based system. This has op amps and capacitors and VCAs, and it has that tonality that we've always loved about our analog gear, right? But the beauty of the system is that it's also hybrid. So you get the benefits of analog, which is sound quality and other things, right? But you also can get rid of the headaches of analog. When I say headaches, I mean, when you bring analog gear into a digital studio, there's, there's just other things you're gonna have to deal with. Latency, determining what that latency is, recallability, inability to automate. APB system literally takes care of all of those things. So we'll cover that throughout the presentation, but I wanna keep it simple. I just wanna show you a few of the, kind of the basic things that people have been doing with compressors and or limiters, and just show you how, how easy it is to, to do this now using analog in a digital environment. Here's what I mean. Okay, so we're in Pro Tools right now. And over here I have a drum kit. And right here I have a couple of auxiliary inputs. And I have the uh, inputs for both of these tracks set to a bus, and the bus I've named drums. So you can see I have the outputs of all the drums going into these. So bottom line, I have basically a carbon copy. Uh, the drums are routed in here, and they're routed in here. And I've got one of the plugins uh, up here on this on this crush track or on the second uh, set of drums. This plugin is the C673A, and this is one of the ones that's included with the APB system. Now, anytime you have identical audio routed like this and you put a plugin on it, it's gonna cause some type of a delay between the two tracks, right? That's inevitable. Now, luckily Pro Tools has delay compensation. So for, for your DSP-based plugins, it, it will take care of that. But when you're using external analog gear, that's a different story. In fact, if you're using external analog gear, typically you'll have to go in and figure out what that delay is. So whatever uh, channel you've, you've patched that gear into, you can go in and, and type whatever that delay might be. Um, there's different ways of figuring it out, right? But with the APB system, of course, that goes away. You don't have to worry about it because the APB plugins report to Pro Tools delay compensation engine exactly how much delay. So here, let me go ahead and play this. And as you can hear, there's no phasing, there's no nothing. It's, it's perfectly in sync, even though it's going through another plugin. And you can see the amount of delay and the amount of delay compensation down here. So all we have to worry about is what sound do we want? We can go in, in fact, to do this parallel compression, let's go ahead and squash the set of drums. And I think what we'll do is let's do this. I'll let the threshold out a little bit. And I'll bring time constant back. By the way, this is basically attack. I like to just simplify it. This is fast attack or super slow attack, right? And fast release or very slow release. So in this case, I want to get that initial transient. Super fast attack. And you can see I'm getting about minus three, maybe minus four dB of gain reduction. And let's bring the threshold more and really crush it. Now I'll bring the output up. So you can really hear that, that crushed tone, right? That pumping that's going on. So here, now we can bring this down. Let's bring in the dry drums. I'll put that at zero for now. And then we can just basically blend it to taste. So parallel compression, super easy to do. The APB system takes care of all the guesswork. You don't have to figure out, you know, how much delay or how much latency is occurring. It does all that stuff for you in the background. So all you have to focus on is the sound and the tone that you're looking for. So another common thing 
um, that we use compressors for is, um, is, is for using keys. Here's what I mean. So in this example, I have multiple kicks along with um, a Moog bass uh, part that I played in here. So there's a lot of low end going on. Let me just play this for you real quick. As a bass player, I typically would want that bass to be dominant in here, but no, we're gonna let the 808 have a little bit more room. So in my opinion, the easiest way to do it is to use a key. So a key bottom line means I'm gonna use this 808. If it hits at the same time as this bass, then I want it to bring down the level of the bass just a little bit. So to do that, we're gonna use one of the APB plugins. And this one is the MooTube. First of all, when I bring this in, uh, my goal is to get about two and a half, maybe three dB of uh, gain reduction from it. So it's bypass now. Let me just play it. And I'll bring it in. And you can see it right there, that gain reduction. I'll take it out, bring it in. So you can hear how much it's going down, just slightly. So to set this up is simple. All you have to do is, first of all, on my 808, uh, I'm just using a send and I'm using, I'm going out to a bus, a bus that I named 808. And then in the key section of the Mutu plugin right over here, I literally can take uh, any key. I can get it from an interface or here's the bus. There's that 808. Boom. So this is ready to go. This is now sending signal into here to trigger it. Right. So all I have to do is put it in key. So now it's going to listen for that signal. For a moment here, you're just going to see the kick and you'll just see the, uh, the reduction going on here. Yep, it kicks in on like the second half of the line. Let's bring that 808 in so you hear it. Perfect, it's doing just what I want. Let's bring the rest in. Now, here's just another plugin that's part of the APB family that I want to show you. And this is the C18. I love this plugin, super clean. You also have the ability to do keying because you've got a key section up here. So I could do the same thing. In this case, I just want to just deal with just, just raw compression for a moment. So this little part right here is an arpeggiated part that I played in. Check it out. <laughs> Cool. So what I want to do, first of all, is just go ahead and compress that a little bit just to get a little bit more control over some of those dynamics. Just bring the threshold down some. Somewhere around there is nice. I'm bring a little less ratio. Okay, I like what I'm hearing. Let's bring it back in. Sometimes with compression, uh, a mixer will have their take on what they want something to, to sound like dynamically, right? But the musician also has their take. And I meant for those initial attacks to, to hit harder. There, there's, a, there's a reason for doing that. It's what I'm feeling. It's the, the feeling of the musician. So I love that McDSP has added this, this little button right here, bite, which bottom line, if I click that, all it does is just allows that initial attack to kind of leak through. So I get that initial hit and then it clamps back down. And here's what I mean. Let's turn it off. I'm going to solo it for a minute and play it. Listen to this. Take it back out. You can almost see it over here in the, the amount of reduction. Watch, I bring it in. Love it. So using keys with analog gear has never been easier. I don't have to worry about patch bays. I don't have to worry about latency. I don't have to worry really about anything. Again, just focused on the sound. 
And one last example, and that's just really using compression, or in this case, a limiter, to kind of help glue my mix together. Here's what I mean. Now, in this case, I've got a lot more instruments in there. I've got some drums. I've got, uh, you know, a few more keyboard parts. Uh, and also I played live bass in it. But everything other than that live bass, these are samples. And these are, all these samples came from various, you know, sample libraries. And I don't know, to my ears, usually when I hear stuff like that, it always sounds like it, it's missing that thing that makes it feel like it was cohesive, like it was like it was it was meant to be part of the same song, right? You can use either compression or limiting to just kind of pull everything back to the ballpark and maybe bring up some of those those lost transients. But either way, it kind of glues it together. And this L18 plugin for me is perfect for that. So let me just play what we have here. First, this is Bypass. Take a listen. I mean, you hear that piano is just squashed. <laughs> Now, what, what I want to do now is I'm going to start to bring the gain up a little bit so that we, we can kind of really hit it and, and push it a little harder so that we get a little bit more of the limiting. I mean, yeah, it got louder. I can't help that because that's, you know, that's what I'm going to have to do. So it's hard to do a before and after. But I mean, I, my ears certainly hear it. It's everything feels a little bit more cohesive, but it doesn't end there. A lot of times, especially with compression and when you're using it across a lot of different types of instruments, to my ears, the high end is usually the first thing to go. And sometimes that might just be the characteristic of when you're going out into analog gear. It just has a warming effect. But I still want to have the ability to, to have that edge, that brightness to still cut through. And this button right over here and this knob color, if I turn that on, this is like a hybrid aspect of this uh, plugin. Everything else, everything about this plugin is going out to analog gear. But this part is actually uh, digital. And it's basically a, like a digital EQ that they've put in there. So, so if I push this to the right, uh, we're going to hear a little bit more um, high end, a little bit more high frequency will cut through. Push it to the left, it's going to actually take a little high frequency away. So whatever is needed, you have the ability to get there. So here's what I mean. I'll try to do this a little bit more extreme and then I'll, I'll dial it in, but check it out. So remember, the APB family is both hardware and software. And with any purchase, you get the full APB Ready plug-in bundle. And that features uh, some of the things that you just can't do with typical analog gear, like full session recall, presets, sample accurate automation. And that hardware, again, we're using top of the line premium analog components. 32-bit converters, supports Thunderbolt 2 and 3 and it supports all Pro Tools sample rates. And unlike DSP cards, as you go higher in sample rate, you start to lose track count. That doesn't happen with the APB system. Whether you're at 44.1 or 192, you're gonna get eight or 16 channels of, uh, of high quality compression or limiting. If you have more questions, feel free to go to info at mcdsp.com or certainly check out the website at mcdsp.com. My name is Brian Carter. Thank you guys for watching.